Let's talk about a Spring Boot microservices related interview question. And this will be on the load balancer concept. Well, this will not be pretty much coding related. So this will be conceptual. Anyone using any programming languages in a microservices environment can follow this session. These days, people are asking a lot of these questions and making people confused. So let's talk about a little bit about this load balancer concepts right now. So what is load balancer? Let's just quickly recap this a little bit. Imagine this is a user, okay, who will be using your application. And this is your Spring Boot application or this application you have created using any language, doesn't matter. Now, the way it works, the user will send a request to this application and the application will respond and will give a response back to the user. Your traditional HTTP request flow. Right now, imagine if you have so many users like this who will be using your application. If all the requests will go to the same application, then this application resources may be overused and this application may struggle to give you a response back. So in this situation, to make sure this application is not going to have any bottlenecks, what we're gonna do, we can create different instances of this particular application. For an example, we can create different instances of the same application. These are the copy of the same application and we can create two or three or four more instances so that you know uh, we can distribute the load between all these applications. And over here, this user right now will not directly communicate with this application. Rather, what we do, we just introduce a kind of load balancer or LB over here, okay? This is a load balancer. So now the user request will come to this load balancer and now this load balancer will dispatch this request to one of this application or one of the instances which is running right over here, okay? So imagine these are the different instances running in different servers, and now whenever any request comes, this load balancer will dispatch this request to one of the application instances. Now, you can treat this load balancer as a dispatcher as well, okay? And now this load balancer uh, can be created by you, you can code this out, or you can depend on any cloud native services and they can give you the load balancer for free. So the work of the load balancer will be routing the request to a appropriate instance. Now the question is how this load balancer will dispatch the request to a proper instance, okay? And how this load balancer will balance the load. And for that, we use few techniques. The technique that I have shown you here is called a round robin technique. Imagine if this user is hitting a request. This load balancer will first dispatch this request to one of the available instance. And then the second user is hitting the request. Now this load balancer will not send the request to this instance, rather it will dispatch the request to the next instance and another request is hitting. Now this is going to route the request to a, another available instance over here, one after another, right? Going in a round robin pattern. Now, if this user is again going to hit the request, now it's again going to dispatch the request to this instance, right? Again, another user is hitting the request. It is going to dispatch the request to this instance. Like that, it is going to follow a round robin pattern how it is going to dispatch this request to different instances. So this round robin technique is kind of a default kind of implementation technique for most of the load balancer. So if you go for any load balancer, even if, if you talk about your Spring Boot load balancer or any load balancer like Nginx or anything, the round robin is kind of default all the time. So now the interviewer might cross question you here that when you should go for the round robin pattern and in which situation this round robin pattern will not work and when you need to switch to a sticky session or when you need to switch to any different other approaches. Now let's just talk about a use case whenever this round robin pattern will not work. Imagine this user is hitting a particular request. Now this load balancer is dispatching the request to this instance. Imagine this user request is asking for some resources which need authentication, right? So right now this application only can give you the response once you are authenticated. So how can you do authentication in any different programming languages? There may be 
various different approaches. But one of the common approaches, you know, you know about this JWT token, right? So JWT token, this mostly belongs to the client. That means the client will send the JWT token with the request. Let's say right now the request reaches to the load balancer and the load balancer dispatches the request to this instance. Now this instance uh, will check the JWT which is coming with the request and let's say this uh, will verify this JWT token and this application says, okay, this is a valid token. So here goes the response. So now this will give the response and the response will be sent back to the user. Doesn't matter. Now let's say this user is hitting the request again. Now this time, this load balancer might route the request to this application. So again with the request, JWT token will be sent by the user or the client. So this application will again verify the JWT token for authentication detail. If it is successful, it is going to send you the response back. So this is a pretty common scenario for microservices architecture. That's why the JWT tokens are recommended. So in a round robin approach, if your application follows a JWT token based authentication style, then you might not have any problem whenever your resources needs authentication before serving it to the client. But the thing is, you know, what if, if it is not the JWT style authentication that you are following in your application? For an example, the interviewer might cross question you. Okay. So you are talking about a round robin pattern. So if the user request comes, we can route it to any available instances and that's going to work fine because the user is only sending the JWT token with the request and whatever server is handling the request, they are going to verify the token and can give you the response back. But what if, if your application does not follow the JWT style authentication, it just follows the session based authentication style. At that time, what are you going to do? For an example, the user is going to hit a request right over here. Now this load balancer sends the request to this application. Now with this request, the user is sending a username and a password. Okay. Let's say this is coming with this request. Now this application take in the username and password and checks that this is a valid credential that we have. So it makes the login successful, create a session right over here. Okay, it's created a session for that particular user and then they say, okay, this authentication is valid. Right now, I'm going to give you the response back and the response is given to the user, which is fair. Right now, the user is again need to send a request. Now it gives the request to the load balancer and the load balancer right now dispatches the request to this application. By the way, this is the same application, but a, another instance, right? Now tell me what is going to happen. Well, the session is created right over here for the user. So now if the request will go to this machine only, we can see, okay, the session is already created for the user. Then we can know that, okay, this is a valid user. We do not need any authentication right now. But right now, if the user is going to a, another newer machine, then here also this guy need to authenticate again. So again, uh, the authentication it needs to be done over here before we send the response to the user. Now imagine the user again hits the request. Now the load balancer follows a round robin pattern and dispatches that request to this machine. And again, we need to do authentication here as well. Now for the session based authentication, this round robin technique is not going to work, right? And in the same way, think about, you know, think about your bank statement. For an example, imagine you are sending a request and the load balancer dispatches the request to this machine. And for your bank statement, let's say it is a pretty big statement that you have, and it's a pretty big PDF file. So we just say, we're gonna send you the files in chunk. Okay, let's say one, two, 10. Now let's say for the first request, we sent the number one file to this particular user. Now, whenever the user hears the request again, the load balancer should dispatch the request to this machine only so that we can send him the second PDF file, right? So here the request need to go to the same instance which actually handled the previous user request. Right now, if we're gonna send the request to a, another machine, this for this machine, this is just a new request. It cannot resume right from there, right? So this is also a problematic scenario. So in some cases, like when session-based authentication we are doing, or maybe whenever you are uploading a large file in chunk, or we are sending a large file 
um, in chunks. At that time also, we might gonna have some problems. So this default round robin technique might not work in some use cases as well. And that's where the interviewer might confuse you. And here the answer should be, well, if we are not going to use round robin technique, we can go for some other technique. And in this particular situation, we can go for something called sticky session, okay? So what is a sticky session? So sticky session means, let's say the user will hit the request, the load balancer dispatches the request to here. Now, let's say if it is for authentication, right? Now the authentication will be done right over here, a session will be created for the same user. Now when the user will again hit the request, now this load balancer, it will send the request to the same instance over here. And how the load balancer will do that? And obviously, how do we track user machines? Using the IP. This load balancer can track the IP of this user and using this IP, whenever the user request comes from the same IP, it can dispatch the request to uh, a particular instance. Or alternatively, the load balancer can also see the user cookies or can read the user cookies. You know how a cookie works, right? In case you don't, watch this particular video. But the way the cookie works, whenever the user will send a request and whenever the request dispatches to this machine, whenever it's create a session, after the session is created, when the application will give a response back to the user, it will send a cookie with that particular response. So in the subsequent request, whenever the user makes the subsequent request, the cookies will be sent with those subsequent requests. So the load balancer can see the cookie that which machine actually handled this particular request before and it will dispatch the request to the same instance right over here. Okay, and this is what we call a sticky session. A sticky session or uh, we also say um, session affinity or something. You can uh, see that on your screen right now. There is an alternative name for this particular technique as well. Okay. Um, but the interviewer might confuse you right over here as well because this might not work well in a lot of use cases as well. This can solve the current problem that we are having if you are not using JWT and using a session based approach for let's say authentication or for anything where you need to track the user sessions. But this might be bad. Why? Because let's say imagine for so many users, let's say for this user also, we're sending other requests to this machine. That means for all the subsequent requests from this user, we need to send the request to the same machine right over here. And this might be a problematic situation because if we're gonna send so many requests to this application instance, then we might overuse the resources that we have over here and this might go slow or down, right? This might be another problem. So we need to make sure this sticky session approach we are following when we need a small interaction or when a user need to talk to a machine for a smaller duration. Right, But if you identify the user and a particular machine or instance need to talk for a longer duration, then the sticky session might not be the right approach. And at that time, we follow a, another approach. And I think that's called least connections. Okay. And what is that least connection technique? Let me tell you that. Imagine in this case, for this user, all these requests are going to this machine. Okay. For this user also, all the requests are going to this machine, okay, this instance. Now we can see for this application, number of opened connection or number of connection which are open, okay, right over here for this, uh, for this application is two. But for this application, there is no open connection and for this application, there are no open connection. Now, if this user is going to send requests right now, now the load balancer can send or dispatch the request to this application instance, okay? Because it is not handling much connections right now. So we can utilize the resources wherever this application instance is deployed. Imagine this application instance is deployed in some machine and we are not utilizing the resources or threads which are available in this machine. So right now we can just pass the request to this machine so that it can, it, it can handle that particular request pretty well. And I hope you understand that. This is what we call list connection technique, I feel. You can check on the screen right now, the technique name, I'm going to be putting it over here. So that's pretty much it for this particular video. I'll see you in a newer one. And if you, if you're interested watching this kind of videos, make sure give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments that 
you actually needed more conceptual videos like this. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, bye-bye, take care and happy coding.